yeah, we're up to fabricating the table now. So we started with the with the legs themselves, and we've got um, some T nuts that uh, I attempted to TIG weld in last night, but um, my TIG welding skills aren't aren't great at all. They're pretty terrible actually. So I'm going to um, just I've got the gas there, so I thought I'd give it a go. But we're going to um, going to MIG them because I'm uh, a little bit a lot better at MIGging than TIGging. So uh, we've got our our T nuts um, that we've that I've pulled the uh, the little um, so the the T nuts are for timber, so they've got these little prongs that you push down the timber to stop them turning. So I've actually snapped them off with a pair of pliers. It was pretty straightforward, and we've popped them into our legs. Now our legs also need on this bottom section they need a spot for a caster to screw into. So I've got a, a square 50 by 50 uh, mil cyclone washer, and I'm just going to weld a um, uh, the cyclone, the M12 cyclone um, nut to the washer like so. So it'll be like this. And uh, what we'll do is that will get welded in like this. And then the, when I get the casters, which I've ordered, they'll basically just screw straight into that M12. Um, because they've got an M12 thread on it, and that's the leg completed. So we're gonna get them set up now. Okay, so that's one completed leg, so we've welded on. We'll clean up those welds a little bit. Um, not too bad, and I'll clean it, obviously clean the top up, because these are gonna be important when we mount the second, uh, when we mount the cross braces to them. So these are gonna be important, that they're nice and flush. Um, so, we'll get to knocking up the rest of them. Okay, so we're going to do a, um, just a dry assembly of the table now. Uh, I've manufactured, I've fabricated up the, the top piece, uh, the two legs, uh, and we just have to weld this section in, um, just here. So, we're uh, I'm just going to do a dry sort of assembly on the floor, uh, just to see how everything looks, and I'll, um, I'll show you what this piece looks like. Okay, so this is the basic frame of the table. So we've got our leg, our top rail, support beam, and our, uh, our other leg. Um, the plans call for an 11 and a half inch gap at this end, um, which you probably can't see. You can just see it here, yep. And, but I've actually had this piece of steel cut to 1200 mil instead of the recommended 44 inches, which is like 11 and, 1100 and, no sorry, 10, 1050 or something like that. So it's actually longer than normal. So I've just tried to square it up um, so that we can make it fit. Because uh, I don't mind if the table's a little bit bigger, it'll just mean that I'll, uh, I'll get a bit more cutting room, um, which will be nice. And it's easier for me to work in metric um, than inches, especially being down here in Australia. It's, that's what I grew up using is metric. So, um, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll, uh, we might put some, I was going to put some tacks in place to start, but I think what I might do first is clean up these welds here and here and on, the, on the foot, um, just to dress them up a little bit. Uh, make it look a little neater. It'll be easier to do that while um, uh, while they're in individual pieces instead of having to use the grinder and hold the bar, try and hold the full part. It's probably better if I um, just put them in the vise and um, or just put them on the table outside and do all my grinding outside today. So um, we'll go from there. So we might uh, clean these clean these parts up and we'll um, we'll come back to this. Uh, assembly on the floor and put some tacks in place. Okay, so that's the grinding done. So all we're going to do now is uh, weld this cap piece on, uh, and then that actually goes on the top tube, and that's where the torch cable mount uh, attaches to. So we're going to put that on to this piece here so we'll get that set up and weld it on now so that goes on top of part number 0056
Okay, so I've, um, I've, I was played it a little bit smart. We actually numbered all these off the actual plans, all the pieces of steel. So I wrote on with a bit of with a sharpie just to get them, uh, so I don't use and weld the wrong piece into the uh, into the wrong position. So what we're doing now is just squaring up uh, that uh, end bracket. That's where the um, the cable arm that actually uh, hangs over the middle of the table is uh, attached to. And uh, you'll see from here, I, uh, I put her on first time and she's definitely not square. So luckily that first tack was very light and I was able to peel it off and away we go. So uh, we just finally get on to um, yeah, getting this uh, sort of sorted out. Uh, you can see there the TIG finger um, really comes in handy. Get, head over to um, Weld, Weldmonger store and see Jody over there. And grab yourself a TIG finger if you do a bit of welding because you can prop pretty much anywhere on that piece of steel and, and, and not gotta get a hot hand. Uh, as you can see there, I'm right next to the weld. Don't even have to worry about my finger burning. So uh, the, uh, the actual welder I'm using is a uh, one I bought from Trade Tools. It's their Renegade brand. Um, and it's the, uh, I think it's the NX160. So the NX160, um, good welder. It's a MIG TIG and arc welder. So it does a, does a fantastic job. Uh, so here with the tacks um, in place, I was able, or sorry, not, I haven't actually tacked these. I'm just lining them up, trying to get it as square as I possibly can. Uh, this way uh, I can just put some very light tacks in place. And if it's not square, I can just give it a bit of a, a bit of a tap. So, um, Unfortunately, my shed's a little bit, even though it's a six meter by six meter shed, um, with all the kids and having to get the shed set up as quickly as I did, it was um, somewhat difficult to uh, I, I sort of, when we built the house, I sort of threw everything in the shed. So I don't have any racking or spacing. So it makes it uh, difficult at times to try and find a, a clear spot on the floor. Um, if I had my time again, I would have uh, taken my time, set up the, the storage space first before just throwing stuff in the shed but uh, it was a case of twins on the way need to get the uh, car into the garage and that's where all the stuff was so in, into the shed it went so here we're um, we're just putting on doing you, you actually assemble or you make two of these uh, these particular legs um, so what this will be this is where it's fairly important to um, to get them nice and square and the same size. Uh, I actually thought about literally building the next frame directly on top of this one, so it was uh, it was right. But um, it was just a little bit hard with, with the tacks. The, the steel didn't quite sit as nice as I wanted. So uh, what I did is I, I just pretty much repeated the same process. But uh, yeah, there's, there's two of these. Um, so that uh, we just have to put our cross pieces on, which will uh, which will be up here in a minute. Okay, so here I am, just working off the floor, trying to utilise the space that I've got. Um, and I'm just just welding the outsides, um, just to sort of strengthen up the frame over those tacks. Uh, and I must say, I'm, I'm really impressed with that welder. It uh, it really does a fantastic job. Um, for it cost me about I think it was about seven hundred dollars Australian. So there you can see the uh, the feet. Um, so that's where the casters will mount into. Uh, so there's four of those. Uh, I dressed up those welds on the edges a little bit to to make them a little neater. But uh, yeah, fan fantastic little unit. Okay, so I thought I'd give you guys a look at the welds that I'm able to pop out with this MIG welder. You see that'll focus. It may or may not. There you go. So that's my welds. That one's a bit sloppy. The inside corners. And we've got More welds over there, so I'll bring you out so you can have a look. Get the lighting on. So that's one. That's basically the legs. 
So we've got there's our top rail. That there is the clamp that the cable arm will bolt to. There's my rails. I mean, they're the bolts uh, for the uh, for the, where the X or uh, the Y axis will run. These are the plug welds that I was talking about. So I've plug welded those just to hold the keep the steel um, from bowing when I'm trying to put the the bolts in here. And so next, so that's both basically both of these done. And we're on to making, so that's that one done as well. So that one there, this plan here is actually that side over there. And then we're on to this piece now, which is the bottom center piece that actually bolts onto the, uh, the bottom section. So see where these bottom holes are. All these bottom screw holes, that's where that section goes on to. And then I have to make two of these. Oops. Two of these cross pieces, um, which will bolt through to the top, I think. I think that's how it works. Um, or maybe, no, sorry. Those last ones actually go down the bottom. So the last single pieces go down the bottom and that top frame goes there. So that's pretty critical to get that as square as I can um, because that's what the basically the plasma cutter is going to be cutting off. So um, we'll start fabricating that up next. Okay, so we've got everything uh, pretty much tacked up and set up. So what we might do is uh, we might do a dry fit and um, see so here we go. So I just need to create some space and we'll uh, get this thing set up so um, let's have a crack eh? see how we see how we went all right let's have a go fitting this up eh? start with this piece eh? Okay, so what you're uh, seeing here is we're fitting up that top piece, um, which is pretty much just a square with a couple of overhangs, I think they're about six inches off the end. Uh, it was, that was pretty important to get fairly fairly straight, because um, that's where the slats, uh, the cut, the slats that your workpiece will sit on it's, uh, when it's being cut. So having this uh, leveled uh, is, is pretty critical. So, uh, so here we're just fitting it up, and uh, putting on that top piece. Uh, those little roller stands come in handy. Uh, I use those for multiple multiple tude of, uh, of, of jobs around the shed. And as you can see in the background, the shed's pretty horrible. Off that, it's as I said, there's stuff being thrown in everywhere with uh, with no storage built in there. So, so we're moving on to um, fitting on those bottom supports. Uh, so now that the top support is in, uh, so. There's uh, one for, for each side. Um, having the slots cut into those um, into those small three mil uh, end cap end pieces is great because it makes lining up the table and positioning everything in the table really 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 easy to, to fit. Uh, so we just run through here and get uh, get all of those done. One goes to the second piece and we're uh, pretty much home and home. We might call that a night. Cable's coming together nicely, so we might. Uh, all I'm going to do is fill out these welds. I'll probably just do them on. I don't know if I'll do them the whole way around. I'm not sure yet. I don't think it needs it. I think they just need to be stitched across here and left on the side. We might see. We'll see if I want some weld practice or not, but. Um, yeah, I'm actually quite happy how that's come out. So, the next thing we have to do is um, mount these little babies. Drill these and mount these on. Got our um, rail 
was happening. But I'm still close enough on what to do here. So we might have a might have to have a bit of a play around with it, I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens. But I know for tonight. We'll call that a wrap, I think. So until next time, see you later from the shop.